In this video, we'll see how to create collage style presentations in just under 10 minutes with Photoshop and SketchUp. Hello and welcome back to the channel. I recently posted a video on 6 different styles of architectural visualization and I received a lot of comments and messages asking for a detailed video on the post digital collage style. So in this video, I'll walk you through the process. Make sure you watch that video as well but after watching this one. I'm Salman, an architect and illustrator. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon for notification. So let's get started. This example that we're using is called the Rough House by Measured Architects. I have modeled this project on SketchUp to use for this rendering. Let's start by exporting a view from SketchUp and that can be done from File, Export, 2D Graphic. I make sure to check this option and change to the maximum resolution for a better quality. Let's save the image and open it in Photoshop. Step number one is to add colors to the base image. We need to select each individual element in this view, create a new layer out of it and add a separate color to it. So let's begin by choosing the base wooden texture on the facade. Click the base texture and choose the areas where you want to add the wooden texture. I'm using the magic wand tool to select and once you made the selection, just create a new layer for it and add a gray color. There are no set rules to add what kind of color you want so this can just be for our reference. Similarly, I'm choosing the other side of the building, creating a new layer and adding a light grey to it. The window frames are a bit difficult to select with the magic wand, so I'm using the brush tool to simply draw over it with a red color. Also make sure to name all your layers as you do this. This was a pre-recorded video, so I did not rename all the layers, which is definitely not the right process to do because as you go along, you will have endless number of layers which might be difficult to access. I have then created a new layer to add colors to all the pavement in this view. Then comes the glass window, I am just reducing the opacity of this and then the main door of the building. Next is a new layer with green for the vegetation and the sky which is straightforward and also a darker grey for this boundary. Now that we have added base colors to all the elements, Let's start adding the actual textures on each of these layers. Step number two is to add textures to the base colors. I'm using Pinterest to choose each individual texture. You can download it or just right click and copy it. Choose the layer you want to add the texture to. Drag and drop or Ctrl V to add the texture over it. Let's resize the texture so that it has the right scale. Just hold Alt and click between these layers. You can notice that the texture that we have added has created a mask over the base texture that we added. We will now be able to adjust the perspective by using the distort or perspective tool to put these textures in the right place. Similarly, let's add another texture to fill up the right face of the building. Let's repeat the same process again. I have a concrete texture that I want to add to this grey area on the facade. I am choosing the grey area and adding the concrete texture on top of it. Let's hold Alt and click between the layers and that has created a mask. Let's adjust the perspective a bit and we will be following the same process for all the texture that we just added. Copy paste the texture on top of the color, hold Alt and click between the layers and then adjust the texture to perspective. A shiny metallic texture for the door. For the grass, instead of choosing seamless textures, I've chosen an actual looking grass texture so that it enhances the perspective. Let's resize the texture and add it over the green color that we created and use the distort tool to adjust this into the perspective. The same thing for the right face of the grass as well. I've then added a granite texture to the left wall and a horizontal wooden texture to the right wall to represent a fence. Let's start by adding some rocks into the garden space. Step number 3 is to add the major elements like the rocks, trees and so on. Let's right click to copy it and paste it into our Photoshop canvas. Two or three variations of rocks should be sufficient. And then let's start looking for foreground trees to create a nice framing effect for our collage. Now to simplify this process, you could just search for a PNG cutout without a white background and add it into your canvas. And if you want to use a specific kind of cutout, you can use this process to remove the white background seamlessly. Let's first duplicate the layer and go to image, adjustments and black and white. Once again, let's go to image, adjustments and levels. Play around with the sliders so you have a nice contrasting black and white cutout. We can then go to select, color range and choose the white areas. With the selection made, let's go to the color layer and delete the white areas. 
and we have a nice cut out. I'm kind of repeating the same process for the trees as well because I think the color scheme of these trees will fit in with the overall composition and we don't have to go through the process of adjusting the colors. Let's copy the trees around and also adjust the sizes so that we have a variation of trees. Now I've just imported the shadows from SketchUp and added it into our canvas. We can use these shadows as a cell to create our own gradient shadows. Step number 4 is to add human cutouts and for this we'll be using Pinterest as well. I searched for 18th century human cutouts and I found these interesting characters that can be added to our canvas. I just copy paste them into the Photoshop canvas and distort them into perspective. The same goes for these humans as well and I've duplicated them to create a shadow. Step number 5 is to add smaller vegetation. Next comes the other smaller vegetation in the garden area and for this I've searched them on Google. Let's drop them in place and remove the white backgrounds and keep adjusting and placing them all across the garden area. It might be important to adjust the sizes and direction every once in a while so that we break the monotonous character of the same PNG cutout that we're using. Let's adjust the colors of the cutouts as we are placing so that it goes well with the overall composition. Now this is the same process that we are repeating. There are no set rules here but just keep in mind to create a variation, break the monotony and make these grass PNGs more interesting. For the rest of the areas, I'm using a leaf brush to fill up the spaces. I found this free leaf brush from a fellow YouTuber. I'm creating these in various colors and sizes and filling up the empty areas in the garden. Step 6 is to make adjustments to blend all these elements together. Let's create a new layer, change the blending bowl to multiply and use a soft brush with a grey color and start drawing over the areas where there are shadows. Similarly, a new layer with the blending mode as overlay or soft light and a white color can be used to highlight some elements. Let's add some depth to this glass element here with a darker shade of blue and also adjust the highlights and shadows on the building. The last part would be to add sky. And for this, I'm reducing the size of the sky to make it as a smaller rectangle. I then found this blue paper texture on Pinterest which could be ideal to represent the sky. Let's place it on top of it and resize it to fill up the areas. And with that, we are almost done. You can now adjust the highlights and shadows as per your liking to get the final image. So that was the process of creating a post digital collage in just under 10 minutes. I hope you liked this video and you found it to be helpful and if you did please hit that like button and share this with your friends. Comment down below if you have any questions of this process and I'll be happy to answer them. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you on the next one.